This morning, very briefly, I'll be talking to Ross about putting my angels to work. Amen. Say it out louder. Amen. Putting my angels to work. And I want you to know that angels are real. Angels are real beings that exist. Angels are real beings that exist. And we'll get to know a little more as we go. I'll be taking my foundation scripture from Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14 and Psalm 34 verse 7. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14. Let's read out loud together. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? I want you to take a note of that uh, pro, pro, pronoun. Is it pronoun? Yeah, pronoun. Minister for them. Not to them. For them. There is a huge wall of difference between ministering to somebody and ministering for the person. There is a huge wall of difference. And how many of us know that God does not make mistakes when he says things? We all know that. Every word in scripture is tried and true. And every word has its right place. This, the King James Version is, the almost, uh, is regarded as the translation that is very, very close to the Hebrew and the Greek uh, version of the Bible. So, now what it's saying is, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who are heirs of salvation? Number one, you un understand that God is the one who sends forth the angels. The dispatch room of the angels are in heaven. The dispatch room is where? In heaven. So he sends them forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. So a couple of things to see there. They are not sent to minister to you. It's part of it. Much more than that, they minister for you. In other words, when they come to you, they are waiting for an assignment from you. Because they are ministering for you. They are standing in the place of God for you. Now, even though they are spirit beings, they have the capacity also to appear in the physical. Angels have the capacity, and if I ask some of us here, we probably will have had one or two encounters with the angels of God in the course of our existence, in the course of our living. We probably will have had encounters with the angels of God. So, I tell you, they are ministering spirits for us who are heirs of salvation. Who is a heir of salvation? Someone that is saved, washed, cleansed by the blood of Jesus, who has Jesus as his Lord and Savior. So, now, those ministering spirits minister for us. Now, let's take it a little further. In other words, if there are things that I need done, and somebody is waiting to minister for me, what do I do? I send them, send them what? On errand. This weekend, I had, uh, thank God for uh, Brother David. Where is he? Let's put our hands together for him. God really used him for, for me this weekend because of the very, very busy schedule I had. He was around the house. I was able to help with some of the things. Okay, uh, uh, David, get this done. And boom, it, it's done it. Uh, sir, it's all done. Get that done. So now, I want to liken the ministry of angels to that kind of experience. So they are sent to minister for them who are heirs of salvation. So if you do not know, you will be doing all the things that you need to do all by yourself. And there are tendency to think that you are alone. But you are not. They are ministering spirits sent to minister for them who are heirs of salvation. They are sent by God. They are dispatched by God. Psalm 91 verse 11 to 12. Look at what it says. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. What are they doing? To keep you in all your ways. Verse 12. They shall bear you up. In their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Now look at that. What it's saying is, there are times that you need to be carried. There are times that you need certain things done. There are times in every form, 
God sends them forth. He shall give his angels charge. In other words, listen. This is your assignment, angel. Your assignment is to stand by him. Whatever he says needs to be done, go and do it. And when he needs to be carried, if he calls you to carry him, make sure you carry him. He said, they shall bear you up in their hands. In other words, they will care about you. Just make sure that everything is fine around you. And many of us don't know this. So we walk and labor all by ourselves and think we are alone. We are not alone. Say, I'm not alone. alone. Now, minister for them, in other words, they are on standby to act based on your command. Angels are on what? Stand by. If somebody is ministering for you around the house, it will be around the house. Isn't that so? And we'll be staying around you. And, and I'll show us a scripture, the second foundation scripture in Psalm 34, verse 7. Let's look at what it says. Let's read out together. The angel of the Lord encamp around about them that fear him and delivereth them. Think about it. So God's angel built a camp. What's a camp? A dwelling place. A shelter. God's angel have a camp around your house. They are living very close to your house. They are watchful. That's why you don't need to be afraid of any devil that comes around. When devils come dispatch your angel to go to work, activate, and I'll show us how to put these angels to work for you. You are not alone. Around your house, they are encamping there, so there's no need to be afraid. There's no need to be worried. There's no need to be disturbed. All you need to do is issue the command. Angels of God, I put you to work right now. Everything that I need get done, go ahead and get it done for me in the name of Jesus because they are your ministering spirits. The word minister means to wait on someone. A minister is someone who waits on another, who receives instruction from another and executes instruction on behalf of another. So they are ministering spirits. You may not see them sometimes, more, in fact, most of the time you may not see them, but they are around. It does not mean that they are not at work. They are at work. You just need to be conscious of that and issue the decrees. And as you do so, what do you find happen? You see the glory of God come around you. And you see the hand of God rest upon you. Now, but let me sound it clear. These angels go to work for only those who are called heirs of salvation. Who is a heir of salvation? One who believes in the Lord. Who is a believer? One who has faith in the Lord. Say one who has faith. One who has faith. Say one who has trust in the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. So a believer is one that has his confidence, his faith, his trust built in the Lord. And that's why Psalm 34 verse 9, look at what it says. It says, Oh fear the Lord, ye his saints. For there is no want for them that fear him. Oh, fear the Lord, his saints, for there is no want for them that fear him. So, when you fear the Lord, when you walk in the fear of the Lord, you have a place with God. When you walk in the fear of the Lord, what do you have? You have a place with the Lord. Now, the, that second scripture in Psalm 34 verse 7 says the angel of the Lord encamp around about them. And I tell us that they have camps, they have tents, they have dwelling places around us. Psalm 125 verse 2. Look at what the scripture says. It says, as the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth forever. And how does he do that? Via his angels. The Lord is round about you and I. He keeps a charge over you. His eyes go and so, 2 Chronicles chapter 29 or so, he says, the eyes of the Lord go to and fro the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose hearts are perfect towards him. So there is a responsibility on your part. 
And there's a responsibility on my part to make the angels go to work for us. You have a responsibility. It's not all resting on God. It's resting on our connectivity to God. It's resting on our faith in God. It's resting on our belief and trust and confidence in the Lord. That's what that psalm is saying. The mountain, as the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forevermore. Praise God. Now, I show us a couple of instances of angels that went to work on behalf of the people of God. Now, when the children of Israel were going to move out from Egypt, when they were going to move out from Egypt, one angel was given charge over the entire camp. And how many people were, were there? About three million people, right? Three million people with one angel. So an angel has the capacity to watch over an entire city. And like we made an analogy the other time, Three million people, you put Calgary together, you put Edmonton, you put Red Deer, and all those towns in between. One angel. So imagine the capacity of just one angel, what he can do. And I'll show us from scripture, Exodus chapter 14, verse 19 to 20. Look at what the Bible says. And the angel of God, not angels, watch it. The angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. So he was going ahead of them. He was leading them. Follow me, this is the way to go. Follow me, this is the way to go. But it got to a certain point when the challenge came for the people of God. The Bible says the angel moved from the back, from the front. He went to the back. And the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. What did he do? Look at verse 20. It says, and it, it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was cloud and darkness to them. But it gave light by night to this. To them and to this. An angel put a distinction between the people of God and the people of the world. So, the angel that has assignment over your life puts a distinction between you and the next person who may be a person of the world. An unbeliever. So, you are not at the same level with an unbeliever. Stop looking at yourself as exposed to the devil. He said he went before them. He put a distinction to this camp. It was darkness. So part of the strategy of God to get the children of Israel out of Egypt was to ensure that the Egyptians groped in darkness. They couldn't see. They had the best of chariots. They had the best of everything, but they could not see. If there is no light here, what happens? Everything shuts down. The microphone will not work. This whole place will be dark. As a matter of fact, we may not see ourselves. That is the kind of darkness that the angel of God put in the camp of the Egyptians. One angel, three million people, shielded them, moved from behind them, went to the front, put a cloud, put, went from before them, went to their back because the Egyptians were running from the back and they put a cloud there and to the other side it was darkness but to this side it was light. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That's how protective our God is with his angels because he, the Lord as mountains are round about Jerusalem so the Lord what is round about his people so one angel was given that assignment to go round about the people of God and put a mark on them that's how God is going to put a mark on you this day amen. if you are the one I'm talking about let me hear you loud amen. amen I saw another instance in scripture that I'm going to talk to us about it's about the man Peter in the New Testament, in Acts chapter 12, verse 7 to 11, the Bible says, And behold, the angel, that look at that word again, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and a smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly, and his chains fell off. Those chains had locks. So angels really don't care, they don't follow protocol. 
In the physical world, we may have protocol. When you have chains, you need chains to be untied. You need to get the key, go and look for who has the key, get the chain unlocked, and all of that protocol. Angels don't care about protocol. That's why when your vehicle is about to have an accident or your aircraft is about to crash, you can put the angel of God to work and he will carry that aircraft in his hand. I had the testimony of someone this past weekend. He said he was in the flight and the aircraft was just going. There was so much turbulence and so much turbulence and people were calling on all manner of their gods and saying all manner of things. But he looked out at the window and God opened his eyes to see an angel holding the aircraft. So that's how valuable your angel is. There is an angel over your life. And I will soon make us realize that now. In verse 8. And he said, the angel said to him, guard yourself. Bind up your sandal. And so he did. And he said to him, cast your garment about thee. Follow me. Now, Peter, you need to be rescued. You cannot be killed by Herod. You cannot be killed by Herod. The church is praying. The church has activated um, the ministry of an angel. And so the church had put faith on the line. Peter, get up. And look at the next verse. And, and he went out and followed him. And wished not that it was true, which was done by the angel. But he thought he saw a vision. And in verse 10. And when they were past the first and second ward, they came into the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord by the ministry of that angelic intervention. And they went out and passed on through one street and forthwith the angel departed from him. Verse 11. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has done what? Sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. It is in the same fashion I pray over you this morning that the angel of God that has assignment over your life will take responsibility for your life, will take you beyond your imagination, will take you beyond your expectation in the name of Jesus. Angels do not follow protocol. Iron gate, they got there. And they, they didn't need to bother to go and look for who has the key of the gate of the place. The angel just commanded it and go away. So I don't know what's happening around you that needs some protocol. I have good news for you. The angels of God know what to do. Amen. All you need to do is put your angels to work and they will go to work for you. So very briefly, how do you activate the ministry of the angels that God has sent your way? Number one, ensure that you are saved. Ensure that what? You are saved. Psalm 34, verse 9. Oh, fear the Lord. He saints, there is no want for them that fear him. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. Are they not ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who are heirs of salvation? So, ensure that your salvation is intact. Listen, brethren. When you live in righteousness that Jesus made available for you and I, you are doing yourself good. You are preserving yourself. You are allowing the Lord to preserve you. You are ensuring that you remain under the covering of the Lord. Psalm 91 verse 1. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. See, the shadow of the Almighty covers you as long as you abide in a secret place. Any place outside it is not safe. Any place outside the secret place is what? Is not safe. How do you put your angels to work? Angelic intervention is activated by your faith. Say it out loud with me. Angelic intervention is activated by my faith. When you are a man and woman of faith and you declare by faith, the angels of God go to walk over your life. Amen. Now, your faith, what is faith? Faith is putting the word to work. 
believing that God's word that you have is working, putting your trust and confidence in him. And as you speak the word of faith, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, and says, we having the same spirit of faith, what do we do? The same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, therefore have I spoken. We believe and therefore speak. So the spirit of faith is a speaking spirit. And that's how you activate angelic protection over your life. As you engage the spirit of faith. As you declare the word of faith. And say, no, it shall not happen. I know my God will not disappoint me. It is exactly opposite that happens when you speak the word of doubt. Exact opposite happen. When you speak the word of doubt, you can't, your angels will be helpless if you cannot speak. Speak the word of faith. Your angel is helpless. Because it's your faith that goes to heaven. And heaven sends the dispatch. Boom. Go. So you must be speaking in faith. You must be standing on faith. In every area of our life, the Bible says, The just shall live by faith. We move by faith, we live by faith, we stand by faith. We, everything in this kingdom is by faith. Faith is the currency of this kingdom. It's some, like someone who comes to Canada and brings uh, Kenyan shillings. He brings Kenyan shillings and he wants to live in Canada. You think he will live successfully? He goes to Walmart. And say, I want this grocery. And then he throws Kenyan shilling at them. What would they look at? They would look at him and say, Where's where this guy from? <laughs> Where are you from? <laughs> Where are you from? And they would look at him and say, No, sorry, we don't understand. What currency is this? Where is this from? It's exactly the same way in this kingdom that we belong to. If you do not have the currency of faith, you can't trade. I'm sorry, you cannot trade. So your biggest task is to build faith. Say build faith. faith. And Jude chapter 1 tells us, verse 20 or so. He said, but ye beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith. Doing what? Praying in the Holy Ghost. Listen, every time you pray in the Holy Ghost, you are building faith. You are activating angels. Because your, your human mind sometimes is weak. It can't pray exactly what you need. But when you engage the Holy Ghost, he's saying, I don't even know what I need, but Holy Ghost, you know what I need. Now go and bring it to pass. So you build faith. Now that process is what activates your angels to walk. And much more, you need to give physical command. Angels of God, go to work right now. Go and get my money from anywhere, north, south, east, and west. Wherever my money is, I give you that task now. Go and get my money and bring it this way. Go and get my job. Raise my destiny helpers. Put somebody there who will favor me. Go and speak to somebody in that place that will favor me. Send your angels on task. Give them assignment. Many of our angels are just watching and waiting. They are looking at the face of the Father. The Bible says in Matthew, in the book of Matthew 18, 20 or so, it says the angels of God are beholding the face of the Father and they are waiting for your instruction. So if your instruction is not reaching the Father, nothing is going to work for you. That's why so many of our, our assignments are not done. We are weak in the spirit. We are tired in the spirit all the time. Ask your angel to go to work for you. This morning, I, I, I had only maybe about two hours sleep from all the events of this past weekend. And it was, it was such a long weekend. And I said, Hol, Holy Ghost, I, I know the body may be calling for rest, but you are the one who owns my body. By the time I finished strength came, my eyes were clear. When I woke up, I slept for two hours. It was as if I slept for like 10 hours. That's what the Holy Ghost can do. 
That's what your angels can do. They strengthen you. They help you. They are available for your call and beckon. Use them. Use them. Send them on assignment. They are ministering for you. In addition to ministering to you, they are ministering for you. Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane. And the task was becoming too big for him. What did he do? He prayed. And the Bible says angels came and ministered to him. They helped him. In the wilderness, when he was challenged by the devil, what happened? As he was there in the wilderness, after being in fast for 40 days, the Bible says, then the devil take at him, take at him, take at him, then the devil leave at him. And then the Bible says that angels came and ministered to him. They minister to him. So the angels of God minister to you, they minister for you. So wake up. Use your angels. No, you are not alone in this whole world. God could not have given you an assignment and allow you to just be helpless. Even as humans, we don't do it. As humans, when you send somebody on an errand, what do you do? You back them up. I say, no, I gave you this task. It must be done. So you stand there, you back them up. If we humans know how to do that, how much more our Heavenly Father will back us up in the various assignments of our life. That's where vision comes in. Unless there's no vision that is driving your life, the Bible says where there is no vision, people run wild. Where there is no vision, people run wild and they do whatever they like. So get the vision of your life because God will always back up that vision of your life. And the strength for that vision he will give to you. And the courage and the grace that you need to fulfill assignment on earth, he will give you. If you, being, I don't want to say being evil, that's what the Bible says. He said, if men, being evil, know how to give good gifts, how much more? Say with me, how much more? With your heavenly father, give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him. So angels are waiting for your call and beckon. Put your angels to work. Shall we rise up this morning?